We started looking at trig equations yesterday. Today, I just want to look at the specific type of equation like this, where we've got some multiple of sine plus some multiple of cos is equal to constant. If the constant is zero, not a problem, because we can move the sine over and then divide cos by or sine by cos and get a tan function. But if that constant's any other number, we have to deal with it differently. We're going to look at two different techniques on how to do it. The first way is to use the T results that we looked at a few days ago. So here's a, an example of one. So 3 cos theta four plus 4 sine theta is 2. We want answers in between 0 and 360. If I uh, let T equal tan theta on 2, and so now I can use my T results, and uh, the equation becomes 3 outside of 1 minus T squared on 1 plus T squared plus 4 outside of 2T on 1 plus T squared equals 2. Basically what we've done is we've turned our trig equation into a quadratic equation. But something we've got to be careful about, because now t, remember, represents tan theta on 2. So I'm only looking for answers in between 0 and 180, because it's theta on 2. Theta's going between 0 and 360. All right, let's tidy that up. Multiply everything by 1 plus t squared. So again, it's convenient, because the denominator is the same in both of those t results. Bring it over to the one side. There's our quadratic. I don't think that one does factorise nicely, does it? So we're probably going to use a quadratic formula for that one. So t is 8 plus or minus root 84 over 10, which does simplify. So I've got 4 minus root 21 on 5, or 4 plus root 21 on 5. Okay, well, let's have a look at this one first of all. 4 minus root 21 on 5, would that be positive or negative? Was it? Negative. negative. So which quadrants are we in? Just two, remember? We're only looking for answers between 0 and 180. So it's simply the second quadrant we're looking for. <coughs> now, because we know that's a negative number, to find the acute angle, the acute angle, of course, has to be positive. So I key it in the other way around. Instead of going 4 minus root 21, I'll go root 21 minus 4. That gives me the acute angle of 6 degrees 39. And in the second quadrant, that's 173.21. But now we double it to find what theta is. So we've got one answer, 346.42. 4 plus root 21 on 5. Clearly that one is positive. So I just want the acute angle here because it's just the first quadrant. So 59 degrees, 47 is the acute angle, which means that's what theta on 2 is. Double it, we get our other possibility. Now, the thing with the T results, if 180 degrees is a solution, T results won't find it. Why? Excellent. Yeah. So remember, we've defined T to be tan theta on 2. If theta is 180, then it's tan 90, undefined. So we, we're not going to find an undefined answer. So you always need to just check. Give a quick check. Is 180 a possibility? And when you think about it, all you really got to check is the cosine, because sine 180 is always going to be zero. So you look at the cosine one, cos of 180 is negative one, negative three, nah, on the other side we've got two, it's fine, 180 is not a solution to this one. Okay, so there's our two answers using our T results. Okay, another way of doing it, which I kind of like, is to transform it into one trig function. It's what's known as the auxiliary angle method. So I'm going to change it, instead of having uh, a sine plus cos, turn it into just one sine function. So same question, 3 cos theta plus 4 sine theta is 2. Now, you remember, I hope, our compound angle for sine, which of course goes... Sine, cos, cos, sine, but it is not the sine. Oh, close. Oh, but if it's a sine, it's the sine. Very good. Sine, cos, cos, sine. So that's what I want to make this look like. Well, it's already a bit like that. It's something cos, something sine. Right, so we wanted sine, cos, cos, sine. Right, so it wants to be in that pattern. So sine alpha, if you like, is with the 3. And cos alpha is with the 4. So what I do is I just draw myself up a little triangle. Sine alpha, that's with the 3. So the opposite side, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I'll place a 3. Cos alpha, that's with the 4. So the adjacent side... I put it in the 4. Now, of course, sine alpha can't be 3 because sine goes in between minus 1 and 1. 
And cos alpha can't be 4 for the same reason. And that's where the hypotenuse now comes into it. If we work it out, the hypotenuse is 5. And so what we really have is 5 times that. So the reality is I wouldn't put in that middle step there of 5 times 3 fifths. The coefficient of my new trig function will always be the hypotenuse. So I work out my hypotenuse and I know it's going to be, okay, it's sine alpha plus theta. Theta is the angle we're trying to find. Oh, what's alpha? Oh, I can go back to my triangle and use trig to work out alpha. It doesn't matter which ratio I use. I can use sine cos or tan. Um, so which one did I use? I used tan. Tan alpha is three quarters. So that gives me an angle of 36 degrees 52. Now, I'm in quadrant one and quadrant two because now it's just a simple sine equals something. First, second quadrant. Let's find the acute angle, which I've called beta this time. Couldn't call it alpha because I've already used it up there. Acute angle is 23 degrees 35. So I now know that alpha plus theta, but alpha is 36 degrees 52, is either 23 degrees 35 or 156.25. So now just to work out theta, I've just got to subtract the 36 degrees 52. So I get minus 1317 and 11933. That's got a problem though. Because notice the first answer. It's minus 13 degrees 17. We said we're looking for answers between 0 and 360. So I've got to turn that angle into an angle between 0 and 360. How do I do that? Ah, I just simply add 360 to it. So my actual answers will be 11933 and 346.43. Same as we got before. Okay. Of course, I didn't have to choose it to be a sine function. I could have chosen it to be a cosine function. So same equation, but this time I want to see it in the form cos cos sine sine. <coughs> so the cosine now will be 3. So this time the adjacent will be 3. The opposite will be 4. Amazingly, the hypotenuse still works out to be 5. So I know it's going to be 5 times the cos. Got to be careful because if it's not the sine, it's not the sine. So we have theta minus alpha. And alpha in this case will be a different angle because we've changed around the adjacent and the, high, the opposite. 53 degrees 8 for this problem. Okay, this time I'm in quadrants 1 or 4 because cosine is positive. The acute angle this time, 66 degrees 25. So theta minus 53, 8 is either 66, 25 or 293, 35. Add 53, 8 onto both. And they're both inside Norton 360, so we don't have the same problem as I just did with the sine one. So this one worked out nicely. Okay, So that's what we call the auxiliary angle method. But this also has another advantage. If we ever have to draw a graph, and later on we'll see graphs like this, where say it was y equals 3 cos theta plus 4 sine theta, that's a difficult graph to draw. But if I can convert that into one trig function, trig functions are easy to draw. And so this method we can use for other things as well, not just solving equations. Okay, here's an HSC one. They wanted us to just simply rewrite. It wasn't actually solving an equation. It was simply rewrite this as one trig function. Okay. So it's root 3 sine 3t minus cos 3t. Okay, so they want to change it to a sine function, so it's going to be sine, cos, cos, sine. So in my triangle that I want to draw up, there it is, cosine would be the root 3. So I've put that on the adjacent. Sine, well, it's just 1, because the coefficient of cos in this one is 1. So I'll put that in the opposite. I now know that R is going to be 2, the hypotenuse of the triangle. And the angle, alpha, will turn out to be 30 degrees. So there it is, 2 sine 3t minus 30. Now, of course, I couldn't have used the t results to do that. That's why you need to know both methods, because you get a question like this, t results not going to help you. You need to do it this way. Similar question, this particular year, 2003. <coughs> it was sine x minus cos x. This time they want us to turn it into a cosine function. Cosine function. So, all right. Well, cosine would go cos, cos, sine, sine. Oh, straight away I've got a problem because I've got sine minus cos, but that's all right. I can rearrange that and make it look like what I want. So I'm going to take a negative out the front and change it to cos x minus sine x. 
now it's in the form that I want to see, cos minus sine. So uh, in this one, both the adjacent and the opposite will be 1, because the coefficient of both the cos and the sine is 1 as well. So the hypotenuse is root 2, so we know what r is, although it'll be negative root 2. Now, they haven't specified in this question that r has to be positive or alpha has to be positive, even though they've written it as x plus alpha. I mean, I could easily say where alpha is negative whatever. Um, but, there it is. So I can leave it like that. Minus root 2 cos x minus 45. Okay. Now, if they had said where r is positive, then I'd probably have to play around with the odd and even functions and try and transform it into something where it's, it's positive. But uh, that's good enough. That's good enough for the answer there. Well, we shall now do exercise half a jolly good fellow. <laughs>